Hey, what's up, Myth Guardians? Cool Cat here with another Myth Guard deck. Um, and today we're going to be going over one of the uh, purple decks that I had covered in uh, my previous video. It's going to be yellow purple control. Uh, this is possibly the strongest combination, at least that it's been discovered so far. Um, like I'd said before, it is, uh, it's already been a deck. It was maybe tier two, maybe tier three, depending on the pilot. Um, it is kind of difficult to handle, um, you know, but once you get used to the different uh, card combos, the synergies. Uh, there's a lot of different options for those in this deck. I'll try to cover a few of them, try to cover as many as I can. I'm sure there's plenty that I don't know myself, um, you know, so if I miss any, then just let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to share as well. Um, but as always, we'll go ahead and hop into the deck list, go into a uh, replay, maybe two, um, with that short conclusion at the end. And uh, before we get into the deck, make sure you do like the video. Um, give me a subscribe if you do enjoy the MythGuard content for more. Um, and then, of course, check out my affiliate sponsor, Inked Gaming. I'll leave a uh, link down in the description below for my affiliate link. If you're looking for any gaming gear, they got you pretty much covered. They have everything from uh, mouse pads, dice bags, um, play mats for any physical card games that you enjoy playing. So give them, a, give, them a, give them a look. And then, you know, everything that you do purchase ends up supporting me directly. So that's a great way to do that and then make sure you check out my uh, my website nephilium gg um in the description down below we have a lot of content on there now we're going to be uploading content weekly almost daily it seems like um you know so give us a look make sure you uh, pop back in periodically to check out our new stuff Alright, so hopping into the deck, first we're going to go over the path and the power. Um, for the path, we have Turn of Seasons. It's just a very standard uh, mid-range to control deck, um, so it's going to be a pretty standard mid-range to control path in the Turn of Seasons. Um, and then we have Impel for the power. Impel is extremely strong with purple minions, mostly looking at things like Rogue Eidolon, looking at God of Gamers, looking at Perfect Grade, Spiteful Mimic, lots of very strong um, you know, board-based effects that Impel is just going to help you uh, to control that board. And then looking at the different packages offered, um, we're going to go ahead and start with your standard control package with things like Clay Effigies and Maze of Iatiku for some card draw. You have your Meso Libres for some uh, early game control. Orbital Jamming Satellite to help take down any uh, big guys. It really helps against things like Sapo or Warded Minions so that you're multiple blast effects do still affect them you have your uh, wonder drug of course a very strong control card you have misanthropia another it's probably the best board clear in the game because it goes around all warded effects and then um, we have Zalia the Unclean. Um, this is a very, uh, very great card with Lurker and all of the uh, great top end that we're offering here. It's pretty easy to uh, protect. Um, and then, of course, you have Sapo the Devourer. Um, so he's just uh, basically a kill spell on a stick, and it's going to be a very, very large stick as well. <laughs> and then we also have Defy Death. This is one of the recently changed cards. Um, the buff to zero mana is makes this card very strong. Um, it's a lot less telegraphed since you don't have to uh, hold on to two mana. You know, floating two purple gems doesn't really tell you too much when you have five or six purple gems. Um, you know, so you could have it, you could not have it. Your opponent doesn't know until they try to smack you in the face. And if they hit you in the face before they play any cards, then your turn just starts and they don't even get to use that turn. I've had that happen to me a couple of times, and it's just pretty much won me the game right out. Um, it's also very strong with the Wonder Drug as well, and um, also with... Um also with balance if they do end up you know having that um potential damage due to their large board this will get you a lot of card draw which you can draw into wonder drug or you can draw into a uh, misanthropia um, the balance change was a very surprising change for me i didn't expect it to be very strong but it turns out that the uh, balance change has been very effective um, being able to play balance and misanthropia in the same turn uh, most off more often than not is extremely key to you know this uh this deck and then we have the feng shui master there's a lot of rainbow going around there's a lot of red orange heaven and hades um so that's going to help 
to you know get rid of those value enchantments we have Jin Suk Dollmaster. Um, just a very strong card. Getting this down one turn earlier makes that brand relatively easy to keep. Um, you know, and it also has Lurker, so it's easy to protect as well. And then we have Master of Shadows. The change to five mana kind of hurt this card, but <clears throat> the buffs to the rest of the purple cards really help this one come into play. Um, and we have the uh, Spirit Away, uh, pretty standard removal. This gets around warded, so it's going to be a very key card for a lot of matchups. <coughs> and then we have, um, let's see, then we have the uh, Pentacle of Flavors. Some of the uh, quicker decks, the quicker purple decks, will more likely use this for the um, armor focused and regen you know but in this deck we're mostly focused on the uh, blast five to help keep that board clear along with the uh, rogue eidolon giving you blast three um, so the pentacle of flavors is very strong on pretty much any minion but it's especially strong on agile minions that we have in the uh, celestial dragon so that's going to be a very strong combo if you can pull that off you pretty much uh, most likely won the game off of it and then uh, moving into our fatties, since we well, went ahead and got it started with the Celestial Dragon, we're also running um, two of the Terragons. Um, this is just a very strongly statted minion, giving you that pearl item to either give uh, one of your other big guys overrun, or you can discard it with Baku Boogeyman. Um, this change made this card pretty playable. Um, six mana, six five isn't the best stats, but it is unsuppressible, which basically means that um, you know you get the Pentacle of Flavor on this you get this on a warded enchantment then it's pretty much just going to keep those no matter what and then you can also suppress the minion in the opposite lane so we're mostly looking at things like sapo or like buffed minions on the opponent's side so it's going to be a pretty strong card for some uh, spot removal we have the uh, Diagajo Supreme with the Imperative Bells. We can play the Diagajo Supreme and then also use its ability on the same turn. So that's going to be a pretty strong combination to watch out for. And then we have our Perfect Grade. Um, the uh, Armor 2 they added to the Perfect Grade is extremely powerful. It's really tough to take down um, outside of just the straight up kill spell, um, you know. But in that case, you have plenty of other backup fatties to get down. And this also impacts the board very heavily uh, on play, you know. So you can either deal 6 damage to the minions in the opposing 3 lanes. Or we can deal two damage in an AOE and then also deal four damage to another minion. That's a, you know, you have a lot of options with the perfect grade, so it's just going to be that much more powerful in a, this deck. And then for some uh, standard curve fillers, we have Ghost in the System, probably the best two drop if we have... Uh, we have open in this color combo. Um, being able to fix the opponent's draws is going to be pretty helpful. Um, it's not, you know, a game-winning effect, but getting this down on curve can uh, can do a lot of work. And then we also are running the God of Gamers. This is going to be some more mid-game control. Um, it's pretty strong. It doesn't take retaliatory damage. So with five attack on this thing, it's going to be pretty uh, pretty key to controlling the mid-game, taking down a lot of the uh, bigger guys. And with the Homeward Crown, you also have the opportunity to either recur the God of Gamers. You can recur one of your big guys in the perfect grade. You can recur Sapo. You, know, you have a lot of opportunities for that. And then we have the Spiteful Mimic. Notice we're not running any Thriving Shades. So, you know, if um, this is basically banking on every opponent assuming the Spiteful Mimic is going to be a Thriving Shade. But a 4-mana four 4-4 four, four is still a pretty strong stat, you know, pretty strong stat-wise. With a uh, payoff, if it does get attacked, if it doesn't get attacked, then that's no problem. You can go ahead and uh, just move it around or just end up swinging that 4 to face or to clear off any minions. So you have a lot of options with the Spiteful Mimic. But um, that is pretty much the list. Shout out to Large Nuggets for this list. Um, he was actually one of the originators of Yellow Purple Control back in uh, the beginning of Open Beta, I believe. I'm not sure how far, deck, how far back this deck goes, but uh, that's about when I started. And he's been uh, pretty much advocating for it ever since. And with these purple buffs, it's getting a lot more attention. Um, but let's go ahead and hop into a game and we'll see how it plays out. All right, so it looks like we are up against Obscure Ball Rock. 
Let's see, so we have a pretty good starting hand. I'm going to go ahead and burn one of my Misanthropias, drop a Maze, and then we'll get some draw going pretty quickly. Let's see, so they are blue. They burned a Sea Haven. Let's see, what are we burning here? We can probably just burn a Balance. I don't foresee a large well let's go ahead and draw first actually you always draw all right so we can go ahead and burn a balance here um hopefully get those uh gems stacked up for either the eidolon or the meso libre keeping our options open this turn so they are blue orange which is fine um let's see they have impel so I think I just want to Libre that. I'm going to go ahead and burn Zalea. Or actually, I'll burn. Go ahead and burn this Sapo really quickly. And then I'm going to Libre that Thane. So that'll get me a uh, positive trade. Maybe a two for one on the Thane. But looking at their burned cards, they have burned a three drop. They burned um, an Efreet, so they most likely have something to play here. I'm thinking it may be like a Shadvahar, or I guess just another Thane. That's very interesting. I'm not sure why they would burn an Efreet um, if they did have if they didn't have a three drop. But you know that's not uh, none of my business. Let's see, so we can kill off one of these Thanes, we can draw a card directly afterwards, and I kind of want to get this Rogue Eidolon down this turn along with the Clay Effigy, but you know the rule, we have to draw first. Let's see, Imperative Bell is a very interesting pull here. Um, it's making me want to change my game plan slightly, so I am um, actually looking into this Pentacle of Flavors as well. That's going to be some really strong... Um, really strong stuff so I think I actually might do that I'm gonna burn this ghost pentacle right on my Libre get a really quick three kills on the board that was pretty strong so that puts us in really strong position um, next turn we can get down this um, this doll master and then use the uh, meso Libre to protect it since it has armor since it has blast it's gonna be pretty hard to take down So they play an Efreet over to the uh, other side. So that's actually um, perfectly fine. Okay, actually that gives me a very, uh, very interesting play here. I'm gonna go ahead and burn the bell. I'm going to Jin Sook. What I'm gonna do, I'm not going to go minus two, minus two. I'm gonna go ahead and shift their minions if I can gonna go ahead and shift their minions over here since they played that one one that gives me something to swing into to kill both of their minions off and then we keep the power train going with the meso libre pentacle is really doing some work in this game i also um do this is uh, one of the really cool synergies here i can play a clay effigy in the opponent's lane to give me something to attack um with the Meso Libre so that I can get the Blast 5 off on, um, you know, any fatties that they may put down. So that's one really cool interaction. Um, another really cool interaction to look out for is if you have the Imperative Bell, you can target the opponent's minions and then play a Misanthropia. Um, and then when the opponent's minion dies at the beginning of their turn, that'll trigger your bell. So you can get that mana and play that extra card or hold on to it for your next turn. Okay, so that um, opens up another snipe from the Meso Libre. Here's nice. two, and then I'm going to pop him over and then kill it off. Um, this kind of leaves my Jin Sook exposed, but it's not that bad because I can just go ahead and throw down this Clay Effigy, draw a card, and then I'm going to look into getting this Ghost in the System down. Let's see, I'll probably just end up burning my Eidolon at this point. Um, I'm not too interested 
in that blast since I have this Mesa Libre going. I'm gonna throw the Ghost over to the uh, right to block off those lanes. I don't want him to pick up that Beast because that could end up uh, being pretty, pretty potentially bad for me. Well, I don't particularly care if they play a Thane right now. But having this Meso Libre pretty central is uh, going to be pretty strong for us. So we can pretty much hit any lane except for the far right. Let's see. So they suppress the Jinsuk, which isn't terrible. Um, but they are making some questionable placement decisions with that Thane, giving me this option to pop that over to kill it off. I can't do any more activations since the Jinsuk is... Um, unfortunately suppressed so we're gonna draw another card uh next turn let's see hopefully they don't have an armageddon angel but if they do we have plenty of backup in the zalea and we can just uh spirit it right away So they got the fall, so they drew two cards this turn, so they're in a slightly better shape than they had uh, looked like. But that's not too bad. So with that parry placement, again giving me the sniping opportunity for the Meso Libre. Or I can just kill it off with the Ghost in the system, I have plenty of options. So it looks like they're just uh, stacking up some resources in their hands. We have a lot of stuff down right now. But a lot of it is also very weak. We have a couple of zero attack minions, so we don't really have that much pressure. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and throw this Tarragon down so that I can hopefully start to build some pressure. And then I'm just going to go ahead and throw it on the Maze of Iatiku. So this way, if they do play an Armageddon Angel, their Armageddon Angel will just die on play since all of my lanes are full. Because the Armageddon Angel has one less health for each enemy minion that it destroyed. So at 7 health, um, it would be just completely dead, giving them uh, no board. And I also have the perfect Armageddon Angel counter in the Sapo. So it was interesting they burned that Thunderclap there. It makes me think they have another one, because that would actually be a pretty decent play. But, oh, they seal the, um, the Meso Libre. Which is fine, it took them long enough, if you ask me. Um, but we have plenty of options to kill off this Kara, so we are in really good shape. I'm just gonna go ahead and take this route, throw the Pearl right on here, kill it off with Fragile, and then I'm just gonna swing face, um, maybe throw Imperative Bell down just because. I'll throw that down on my 5-6, the more threatening minion. Then I'll go ahead and throw another one down on this uh, O2 as well. So they are really sticking into this game, um, even when it doesn't seem like they have too many options. But that's good for them, proud. That looks like a really strong Sapo spot, but that's not a very strong Sapo target. Let's see, so I'm thinking I can honestly um, use that if free to kill off uh, some of my weaker zero attack minions. So I'll probably actually do that. Of course, we have to draw a card. Feng Shui Master. That They did have a Sea Haven, but at this point, I'm really not concerned with uh, whatever they'll play. I'll go ahead and drop down the uh, Diagajo Supreme right there. Kill that off. I'm going to pop this guy right over here. And then I'm going to put this uh, bell on my tarragon and there's the concession so we pretty much just really controlled that game from start to finish we were in charge of the board state the entire time which is exactly what this deck is looking to do now we ran them out of resources they got a lot more resources and then we ran them out of resources again and they didn't have any way to come back from that
so that's the deck um it's a very powerful uh control option for you for all of you uh purple fans yellow gives you a really strong control base to go ahead and use with uh the combination of both purple control early um and purple late game bombs to give you that edge over most of your opponents this deck does slightly struggle against other control matchups but it really handles those aggro and mid-range matchups very very strongly and if you're seeing a lot of that on ladder definitely uh, pick this deck up and give it a run but as always give me a like if you like the video subscribe for more Mythgard content and remember gg for matt